Hi, everyone. My name is Cassandra Brown, and I'm so excited to be a part of this discussion panel on the newly released book by, written by Mr. Carlos Moreno and Mr. Elliot Washer called Get Real, Your Future Depends on It. It's such an awesome, awesome book. I have thoroughly enjoyed reading it myself. And, and the book is, is just so informative um, on what our school children are going through on today. And we're also joined today by a wonderful panel of career specialists from various school districts in the PD area to discuss the book, their thoughts, the impact, and the reactions to the book. And before we get into our discussion, we're going to take just a few moments to give everyone on the panel an opportunity to introduce themselves um, on our panel so that we'll know who we're talking with today um, in regards to the book. We're going to start with Mr. Carlos today, um, one of the writers of the, of the, of the book. And then we'll kind of go around and, and introduce um, and let you all introduce yourselves. Thank you, Cassandra. I'm uh, Carlos Moreno. I'm the co-executive director of Big Picture Learning uh, and proud co-author of Get Real and excited to be here with you all. Wonderful. Miss Miss uh, Miss Chrishell. Good morning, everybody. My name is Chrishell Bass and I am the regional career specialist for the PD area, and I'm excited to take a deeper dive in to get real. Okay. Mr. Charlie? Oh, thanks, Cassandra. I'm Charlie Plant. I'm the uh, Big Picture Learnings Coordinator for the Harbor Freight Fellows Initiative, which is a partnership with the Harbor Freight Tools for Schools Foundation to support youth for whom a trade is their calling. Okay, Ms. Coker? Yes, good morning. My name is Sally Coker, and I'm a career specialist for Johnsonville Middle School. Okay. Uh, Ms. Dozier. Hi, my name is Carissa Dozier, and I'm the career specialist here at Jonathan Middle School in Marion. Okay. And last but not least, Ms. Erica Speller. Hello, my name is Erica Speller. I'm the career specialist here at Dr. Ronald E. McNair School of Digital Communication and Leadership in Florence District 3 in Lake City, South Carolina. Wonderful. We just want to thank everyone for just being here and taking the time to be here today to um, just talk about this wonderful and amazing um, book, Get Real, and, this, and the subtitle of the, of the subtitle, Your Future Depends on It. Um, the book is based on the school experiences of two teen main characters, Bella and Xavier, that had more of hands-on learning style um, and their struggles on how to overcome hurdles and teaching styles in the classroom, finding solutions on how to tap into their personal interests and gain positive parental influence to find the career paths of their choice. And we've all heard it, and we've probably said it a time or two ourselves, parents just don't understand. But the book also helps us to understand um, that a successful career path for some students may not always be by the pathway of a four year college degree alone. Um, and and, and it, like I said, the book itself, having children myself, the book was so insightful. Um, it, it really got me to thinking some, what are some of the questions I need to be asking um, my children and those that I you know, may come in contact with um, as well. But we're gonna get started with the discussion. And, and Mr. Carlos, we wanna start off with you and, um, and what was the inspiration behind writing the book? Yeah, thank you, Cassandra. Uh, the, the, the inspiration came, well, the, the genesis and the origin of it came from both Elliot and my kind of passion for, for comic books and graphic novels growing up as, as young people in New York. Um, we, we both over the years have talked about our, our affinity um, an interest in different comic books and and just really the role that 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 played in um, in our lives in our development and then we've seen over the years as educators how you know comics have evolved into now what are graphic novels right which are slightly longer more detailed um, and 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 finite right in terms of a graphic novel that's just an illustrated book and the role that that played in uh, kind of developing the love for reading or a passion for reading for young people um, and young people that we've worked with um, specifically throughout you know, our time at Big Picture. And 
I I then jumped in when I when I saw the earlier animations and and pieces that Elliot um, did with the great folks at Fable Vision around navigating our way, and I had, had you know was just a fan of that work. And Elliot approached me and he said, "Hey, you know, do you want you know, given these conversations that we've had, would you like to be, you know, like co-author this piece?" And I jumped at that opportunity um, to be able to do that, and then to also center um you know black and brown youth in these in these books and their stories uh which we don't often see in graphic novels um so that and 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 grounding it in a book that really helped elevate and show what we believe is possible what we know to be possible for young people to have opportunities to explore to learn and that we're all our own unique individuals in so many ways so that that that's kind of the origin story for for Get Real. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. And we're waiting on Mr. Elliot Washer, um, also uh, one of the writers of the book, to come in and kind of join us um, in the conversation um, as well. But but um, Mr. Carlos, what conversations did you want to stir writing this book? What what was what was some of those, those some of those things that you wanted people to begin to ask questions about? Yeah, we 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 wanted to stir up a, a lot <laughs> in, 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 in the through through this book. Uh, primarily, we we wanted to talk about, um, you know, what how how sadly I think too many of us, whether it's education or just society in general, kind of like um, don't necessarily value kind of these innate gifts and 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 specialties that every young person has. Mm -hmm. um, so there was one and that there's that everyone kind of lives and exists with those with those gifts and sadly whether it's society or, or schools don't really value or lift them up or see them as assets so that was one one thing we, we clearly wanted to do um, and 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 also elevate like the joy right um, because the characters are all real characters they're based off of real people um, Bella who's the main character who you mentioned Cassandra is mm -hmm is based off of my daughter, like her likening, her likeness, mm -hmm. her interest, just the, the, her quirkiness in it. Um, and Xavier is my, my nephew, her little cousin. So, um, and that's, the, and, and he's, he's continues to try to really figure out who he is in a variety of different ways. Um, and it just felt like it was something that a lot of young people would be able to see themselves in. Um, so I wanted to launch that conversation and then also schools. Mm -hmm. Right. We wanted to for schools to be able to um, to to kind of get a glimpse of what might be possible the, the, as, as we went into the AR spaces and and Bella talked about the schools that, you know, her school and what's possible. Those are big picture learning schools. Right. That's this. This is how we're structured and this is what we do. We see our young people um, as assets. We try to value kind of who they are and how they show up to our doors what they know, what they're curious about, what are they interested in, interested in and really start there um, and then uh, you know, support them in flourishing and, and building out and finding, continue to find their way. Okay. So yeah, we wanted to provoke that conversation. Mm -hmm. okay, but, and how can we get more teachers in, in the districts to focus more on hands-on learning with so many pressures on core subjects? Um, you know, a lot of times, you know, there's a lot of pressure for, for teachers and, and the staff to um, make sure that, you know, we're reaching test scores and, and we're, we're reaching proficiency and a lot of things. But um, how, how can you get um, some of the teachers in the districts to start thinking about some of these things? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's the ongoing conversation and question that's, that's, that's existed before even my time in education. I think I think there there needs to be just an honest reckoning and and like looking at what it is that the current and more conventional schooling system and structures is actually achieving, right? And then once there's an honest reflection and 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 conversation that that is is being had and, and needs to continue to be had around that it's not that the system as it's designed and our schools as designed aren't necessarily serving all children well, right? So once there's an acceptance and understanding of that, I think an understanding that there's that every young person, young people learn differently, 
they have different interests, they're different beings, and that there are examples that exist in the world that are serving young people well. Not just big picture. I think there are a lot of different folks that are approaching the work with young people in super, super personalized ways, super authentic ways. And that are and that we're seeing students like after graduating from high school going on to do amazing things. I think that those conversations need to happen. And then it's around support, right? So recognizing that as a former teacher and as a former principal, that role is incredibly hard and challenging. But so we so we also need to provide the support to teachers to shift, right? Like how to pivot in their teaching, what their experience look like, what does that role look like of teacher, and you know, and essentially redefining it, right? Instead of just teachers being kind of like the deliverer of content, mm -hmm. but also a teacher being able to be a facilitator of learning, right? Um, I think I think that a lot of teachers, if supported well, um, would would flourish and would embrace embrace those shifts. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. We're gonna we're gonna pull everybody else in, kind of in the conversation and kind of get some some of their thoughts and ideas. And, and, and I'm kind of going to kind of go around and, 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 and the first question that I, I want to ask um, is what are some of your favorite aspects of the book? And so we're going to kind of go around to each and every one and kind of, um, you know, ask that question because um, I want to hear your thoughts and, and, and your ideas and views on, on the book as well. And we're going to start with Miss um, Caressa. What are some of your favorite aspects of the book? Um, I love the book because it's an easy read. Mm -hmm. I'm here at the middle school, but I've also opened it up to a fifth grader and he loved the book um, felt like it was um, something that he could understand and relate to. And, you know, it showed him someone that looked like him that was um, inspiring and productive. Miss Coker. So many, it's hard for me to narrow them down, but I, I like how I can read the book today and talk about networking and I can read the book again and we can talk about colleges or um, jobs that you don't have to have a degree. You don't have to go to college to get. You can read the book every day for a while and just have so many different things that you can talk about. I mean, I think it's a great book for 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 this age in, in my school. Wonderful. And Miss, Miss Erica? Um, I agree with Carissa that it was a very easy read. Um, I definitely like that it was two ends of the, of the spectrum of, you know, having to learn that you could do things hands on and then also having to know that, you know, it might be some things with book work that you have to do. But I really, really enjoyed the hands on perspective from Xavier when he was able to, you know, show his zapping that, you know, everything zapped into something different. Mm -hmm. um, whenever he went into a room, he didn't zap and there was something different with something hands on. And I really feel like that showed that we can do this in a school district. We can do this at school, you know, hands on things because hands on to me is always better. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Well, Mr. Elliot Washer, just one of the co-authors of the book, just joined us. Hello, Mr. Elliot. How you doing, everybody? Sorry for being late. Wonderful. Well, you're right on time because I have a question for you. Oh. <laughs> We're going to jump in with you. We, we, we've talked with Mr. Carlos and kind of the inspiration be, behind the book. Um, but what but what what are some of the things that you want to say as well as one of the authors of the book? Kind of, you know, what was your inspiration behind and writing, you know, and writing the book as well? Right. Well, the, there's many parts to the book. Oh, one part of course, is uh, to show the role, the powerful role that our families and, and parents have in the lives of their children um, in terms of their interests and supporting that and, and supporting, once again, schools that support their interests. Um, schools do, uh, their work is around certifications and content. Rarely is their work around connecting young people through their interests to, to who they can get access to, which is so important in the, in the rest of the world and, and, and in your life. And so we were making that statement um, that it is the work that we do at Big Picture in, in a kind of a quiet way that, that shows that this is something that happens naturally. The other part of it, or many parts, is 
um, to talk about the elevation of, of the skill trades and how important that is and that it is um, something that young people are interested in, that it is um, equally intellectually, socially, um, academically as rigorous as, as going to four-year college in terms of uh, solving problems and figuring out the world and, and making uh, statements and, and, uh, and supporting data at the end of the, at the end of the, of Get Real to show that. Um, and it just very timely that um, COVID happened and Bella's working at home <laughs> with the support of her family. Uh, and so is, uh, is Abby. <clears throat> and they're taking what they're doing at home and bringing that into the school and back and forth. And that's a, that's a very strong and powerful message that it's not a one-way street. It's not just what's going on in school to be taken home as homework, but it's what's going on at home to be taken back into, into school that, uh, that uh, educators pay attention to. So I'll, I'll stop there with those three. There, there, there's so much more um, uh, to this around. Uh, yeah, I'll stop there. Okay, okay. Ms. Chriselle, what was some of your favorite aspects of the book? Um, the parental support. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big piece um, with our students finding their career path. Because I feel like in this book, the support from her mother mm -hmm. allowed Bella to become an advocate for herself just from the support from her mother, knowing that that parent had her back and was on board with her decision, led her to find her mentor mm -hmm. and also led her to talk to her cousin about finding his way. Um, so that was a big piece that stood out to me because we have a lot of students who either don't have parental support or if they have parental support, it's based on what the parent is saying they want the child to do in order for the parent to support them. Um, I've come across a number of students at college application days saying, I want to do this and go to this school, but my parents said if they want if they want to be if they want me to be supported by them, they must follow the family's traditional professional um, bit areas to go in. So if your daddy is a doctor and he went to Clemson, I mean, yeah, to, you know, if your dad's an engineer and he goes to Clemson, well, if you decide you want to be a doctor and go to USC. The parents said, we're going to pull our support because that's not what our family, you know, that's not what our family do. We go to Clemson. We major in this. But if you decide to go in another direction, you're on your own. So it's just examples like that that made the book really, really meaningful for me because she had that parental support. Um, and I'm pretty sure her mother guided her. But the parental support really um stood out to me because that's empowering when you can support your child so absolutely. that's how it stood out to me the most absolutely and mr Char mr charlie i'm i got a twofold question for you sure uh, because i know i know your passion but but first um what were some of your favorite aspects of the book well just as a uh, a former uh, classroom daydreamer mm -hmm. I loved, I don't know where the inspiration for this came from, the, the augmented reality app. Where did you guys come up with that? <laughs> that, was, that was all Carlos. <laughs> and, and, I can't, and I can't even take credit for it because we, we had a number of young people, including Bella and others that were like, we, you know, who were thought partners on on, on the storyline along the way? They're like, I think I was actually a Bella suggestion, where she was just like, you know, what about AR? And I didn't know what AR was, and this is like augmented reality, Dad. Like I was like, okay, and and here we are. And then the folks at Fable Vision, they they dug it, they liked it. So that that's great. I love I love that part of it, and I still have that fantasy when I'm at like board meetings where I. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was living at Tennessee yeah. today. I was at a board meeting. <laughs> but, the app. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is such a great, such a cool book. Mm -hmm. 
every time I go through it, I find something else that just um, not, not only makes me um, feel great and, and kind of happy, but uh, that I see something new about the nuances of how to support human beings as they develop. You know, that's, that's really what we're doing. And um, this really mirrors reality. I mean, we, because we all have students who may not, uh, like Xavier, may not be, you know, great sitting in classroom kids, but are doing stuff on their own outside of school that engages them and, and where there's deep learning going on. I got lots of examples. But, um, you know, specifically on the trades, we know that connecting kids to what they're interested in works. So we had, Last year in Harbor Freight Fellows for students going to the trades, when the pandemic hit, we had 122 fellows that were enrolled in fellowships, but the school stopped, you know, in terms of, and um, I think maybe your experience in South Carolina was typical, was that kids didn't really engage in the online classroom at the rate that you would like. However, almost all our fellows continued with their fellowships and finished. No, 113 out of 122, 95%. Wonderful. Yeah, which is just a testament that if you connect human beings, not just youth, mm -hmm. to their interests and what is meaningful for them, deep learning and achievement occurs. So, and that I love the epilogue. That's what that talks about in the epilogue there about where these two kids go. Wonderful. And that, that leads to my second question for you, Mr. Charlie. Um, because I know your passion for apprenticeship. And when it comes to apprenticeship and mentorship, um, the book is kind of based around middle school students and middle school level. Um, yeah. Give me some suggestion of ways to find these opportunities. Oh, Lord, they are, are all around us. Our experience of big picture with 25 years of finding mentors for youth is that there are so many adults out there who would love to work with youth. Mm -hmm. It's not difficult. Every time I walk into a store, I size up the, the guy behind the counter, the owner, and, and do you like high school kids? Yeah, yeah, would you, can someone interview you? Yeah, there are, I mean, thousands of mentors are just out there waiting to be tapped. You can do it through cold calls, you know, the kids themselves often have a mentor in their back pocket, someone that they identify with, even when they're very young. Um, I'm working with a kid who's uh, 13 years old, and he worked with an elevator repair guy. And because he was walking down the street and saw it and started talking to the guy and the elevator repair guy took him in and showed him the elevator and, and you know he's been a mentor ever since so the the world is full of natural naturally positive relationships between adults and kids yeah, wonderful 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 but um miss um miss caressa um how important is it for teachers to be hands-on with the students in the classroom i think that's a very important aspect because you have so many students that um learn differently uh, so you just come in um, thinking you can teach all of the students in one way. Um, some need to put their hands on things to be able to remember and regurgitate the things that you're being taught. So I think that's very important. Wonderful, wonderful. And Miss Miss um, Miss Coker, you mentioned um, really good teaching opportunities. Talk briefly um, um, about those ideas and give some examples of careers that, um, that need college degrees and careers that don't need college degrees. Um, I feel like there are, like in my classroom, like we've been doing career interest surveys with my next set of students. And um, I have them go through and look at the ones that are their tops. And mm -hmm. I let them go through and choose and look at the ones and what it takes to go get that degree or or become that that career to some don't take it and some do. And they're like, oh, my goodness, I didn't realize that I didn't have to go to college and um, that I can go quicker and get a job sooner and start making money. And 
I think it's a good eye opening experience to see how much they make and how much they, you know, what it takes to learn, I mean, to live off of their, that salary. So I, I, I think that's a, a huge introduction to this age of students for them to see for their future, to be more prepared of what they are really interested in. So I think it's a wonderful thing. Good, good, wonderful. And Miss Erica, how did this book inspire you to influence children in their career paths? Um, right now we're in the middle of IGPs. Mm -hmm. So um, I've always been a person of when, when my kids do IGPs to be very mm -hmm. realistic with them. You know, if you're going to do this, if you're going to do that, like you don't have to go to college. That's always my first, you know, my first thing I tell them whenever we start any lesson for the school year. Like, you know, don't home tell your mama that I said, Ms. Eric said you don't have to go to college, but <laughs> you have other options. You know what I'm saying? Like you have other options. Because when I was in school, <laughs> My mom said you was going to college, and that's what it was going to be. <laughs> but now there's so many career things. There's so many trades and different things you can do. And those people make just as much as people who are in, you know, who went to four-year schools. So I always try to tell my students, like, you know, you know, so that's why I enjoyed, like I say, with Xavier, you know, with the zap and he changed it into something else. Because you have those kids who are like that. Like they can't learn like this. They can't see like this. But if it's changed into something they understand, they do more and want to do more. So I always try to, my career days or anything, I try to be hands on because I, you know, we're from Little Lake City. I really just try to be realistic with my babies. <laughs> You uh -huh. know, not saying that they'll never get or never go, but also understanding that, you know, because our district, poly, you know, our district motto is for every student to be college and or career ready. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we always, you know, that's that's what the district has always had for the past um, at least 10 years. And that's what we really follow by to let them know that it's other options, you know, it's other careers, it's other things and nobody won't look at you any different, you know, mm -hmm. as long as you're doing something, <laughs> something <laughs> Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely, and I love it. And I love in the I love in the book. Um, and you see, I've got my little my little notes there because I've just thoroughly just just enjoyed the book, and I've just you know just went through the book and, and made notes myself, mental you know for myself. But um, in the book, um, Xavier was artistic and created a comic book. His main character in the book, um, Craig, discovered the magic app, uh, which Mr. Charlie just mentioned. Um, that changes your experience in the classroom just by imagining it. And while Craig is sitting in the classroom, all he hears is blah, 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 blah. But once he hits that button on the school AR, he hears the teacher say, the most important question we're going to talk about is what interests you? How important is it for us to ask the question of each and every child we'll ask it to mr carlos and mr mr elliot there how important is it that for us to ask that question to each and every child not not just one that we think are college ready or some that we think are you know are not college ready but how important is it to ask that question to each and every child will it one of you start mr carlos or mr elliot <laughs> i I'm, I'm happy to start um i, I it's, it's essential, it, it allows us to really know our students best and better, right? It gives us a, a peek into the window of their lives, of their, of their, um, of their experiences, of like their, it even, I, I have found that it, it just gives us an insight into kind of like, not just their, what they're good at, but what they think they may not be good at, mm -hmm. um, and allows us to really reach them in very different ways. Um, I think it's, it's if you think about teaching in the in the original like definition of the of the word like in the biblical sense is to lead forward and lift up is how do you do that if you don't know your students well right. there's absolutely no way to do that if you don't know your, your your children and know the babies well i'll i'll i agree and i i, I wrote five minutes ago uh, during this talk i i wrote a little note to myself about a story about uh, a MacArthur Award winner, the Genius Award winner. His name is Bill Strickland, oh, and he's in, he's in Pittsburgh. And we're pretty good friends over the years. Uh, and one of the stories he told me uh, was uh, that as he became, how he became a ceramicist, you know, a craftsperson, was he walked by a guy named Frank who was a ceramicist and he said, 
can I learn that from you? Mm -hmm. So he was making this selection about what he wanted to learn and who he wanted to learn from. And Frank said, if you come back here tomorrow, I'll teach you. So it's that other way around. They're asking us a lot of the times. We can't be too busy not to honor that ask and 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 add a little piece to it to make sure that it's real that's what frank did he was a smart he was smart he said okay you got to come back here and then i'll teach you and that that was the start of it so it's both listening to students and it's in two ways you know asking the question and then and listening for their question of us mm -hmm. as charlie points out so many of us want to be mentors um, and you sign up, but they come right in front of you. Our young people come right in front of us and say these things and we don't hear it. So we have to be ready to listen there as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mr. Carlos, I know that you, um, that you have, a, have another meeting, you have to go. Um, but again, uh, before, before you leave, just please, um, you know, is there anything else that you would like to, any thoughts that you would like to leave with us and, and or any any um, thought provoking um, things that you want us to, that we can come back to the table and, and ask if we have these career professionals here that they can go back, take back and go back into to the classroom and be inspired. Uh, interestingly enough to, to the folks that are on this call, I mean, fortunately, I really we really appreciate all that you're doing with furthering the conversations and working with young people the way you do, the way you lean in with your, your young people. Um, and it's, it's, I guess my ask or my wish is just to continue to, to spread and, and share that, right? The, the experiences that you're having, the successes that you're experiencing um, with your young people because of how you engage with them. I think ultimately that's, that's our hope is that it will continue to spread, not necessarily the book, but really the practices that the book tries to elevate um, throughout, throughout those pages. So. Thank you all. Appreciate y'all and look forward to being with you in person soon. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Carlos. And, and again, thank you. Thank you for, you know, also, you know, your thoughts and inspirations as well. You, and Mr. Elliot, you know, for, for this wonderful, wonderful book is very thought provoking. Definitely, definitely at, it asks the right questions and, and, and it provokes us to ask the right questions as well of our children. So thank you, Cassandra. Be well, everyone. All right. And again, um, we're gonna we're gonna look at another part of the book um, that just really stuck out to me. Um, Craig in the classroom again. He's hearing blah 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 blah. He hit the button on the school AR, and the teacher says, "Ah, if that's what you're interested in, I can totally teach you math in a way that you'll find interesting." How do you deal with the pressures of teaching and yet zoning in on the interests of the students, Ms. Ms. Coker. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I think that it can be difficult, but for me, I, I have found that I, my, I have two children and they both learn very differently. Mm -hmm. So you have to bring it to them in different ways, hands-on learning. Um, I'm My niece, she has to write everything down again. I think that as a teacher, you have to um, make it interesting for them and bring it to them in different ways so they can learn it the best of their potential. Mm -hmm. You never know um, which child what's going to click in their brain sometimes. But so if you bring it to them different ways, um, hopefully it will spark a fire into one of them to go further with that um, information. Wonderful, wonderful. And Ms. 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 Caressa, how, how do you deal with the pressures of teaching and yet zoning in the interests of the students? Uh, just yesterday, I was in the classroom and I started off with we always are in our classes saying that we're not gonna um, use this information that's being taught. Mm -hmm. And what I was talking about, of course, were, were the different careers um, that they can experience at with hands-on careers at the ACT building, um, which is our vocational center here in Marion. And um, I told them that this is what, when you're in these classes, these are classes of teaching you what you're gonna do in your daily day um, activities at these different careers of your choosing. 
Um, so for them to get in there and to actually think about, are there any of these courses that they would like to uh, take on as a career? Uh, so if you're able to show them that, yes, you can use this every day, then or um, interested in what you have to say. Wonderful, wonderful. And Ms. Ms. Erica, how do you deal with the pressures of teaching and trying to drill into the, into the, the interests of the students? Um, it is hard sometimes because you, like you say, you have to try um, for them to understand and for them to, you know, get it or want to be there. You mm -hmm. definitely have to try different ways. Mm -hmm. So it's just trying, you know, what works best for you. Sometimes even asking the students, you know, you know, of, of help or how would they understand it better or how, you know, do how they do this and how to do that. Because sometimes it's just hard to get because everybody's different. You may have three or four different learning styles in one classroom. Mm -hmm. You just have to try to find that niche to know, you know, uh, to know a way. So that's why, like I said, it's just always a hands-on or something that's, you know, up and they can see it because lecturing and just telling them a lot of people, a lot of kids, a lot of adults don't understand like that anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, being able to show them having something vivid, like I was very excited this school year with Bitmoji Classroom, like to learn that, mm -hmm. to be able to do that where, you know, I, cause I never did it. So have somebody, as soon as they show me, I was like, oh, you know, like actually being able to put and set up on a Bitmoji Classroom, you know, my thing, that's how I did my first lesson. Like, you know, they, they went through it. They had to click on like the picture that was on the wall and then it brought up the 16 career clusters. So, you know, just trying to find a way that just interested them and try to, it kind of interested me because I was just like, oh, I, did, I just didn't know that was out there. So just always trying to, you know, trying something new, just something where they can actually see it. And usually they, you know, understand or try to get the concept of it better. Absolutely. And I think I think we've definitely seen that. And I personally have seen that myself um, with my with my two daughters um, as well, especially with the COVID. It really makes you have to look at things a little bit differently because now the teaching is a little bit more in the hands of the parents. So you have to try to find those ways to keep them interested um, in what's going on and try to keep them um, focused you know, especially in these times of the way teaching, you know, the teaching is now. Now my oldest daughter, um, she's kind of the one, she cannot listen to the lectures. Her, her thing is just give me the work, tell me what to do and move out of my way. And I've got it done. And she will work through the whole syllabus. You'll spend this day up and work through the whole entire syllabus. But my youngest daughter, uh, she, she learns a little bit better if I can show her a picture or if she has to get a visual about, you know, what's going on. Sometimes, you know, it's like, well, I just don't get it. But then once she kind of sees what's going on, then it's like, okay, I've got it. Move out of my way. So, so learning, you know, learning myself, how they learn, it, it makes, it makes a difference. And from a parent's perspective, you know, that's something, and it's, it's, a, it's work <laughs> to, you know, to be able to, to learn your children and to know how they learn, how they understand how, what, what, what teaching style helps them to be better able to excel. So, so definitely, and it's not, you know, again, it's this pressures for the teachers, but this pressures on the parents as well, especially during this time of COVID on how, how to, how to keep them engaged. You know, they're not nodding off in class or they have a project and they're thinking, oh, I, I just can't do it. I don't know what to do with it. So, so definitely these things makes, make a difference, but also in, in the book as well, there's one other key thing. It says, Craig is at the door of the guidance counselor's office and asks the question, why is college my only path? He zaps the old, the old scene. When, the, when, when students' journeys are supported by the right way, it leads to success and chances to give back apprenticeship, trade certificates, and colleges. What are some of the ways to help students get on the right career paths? I'm going to ask this of our um, careers, of our career specialists. What are some of the ways to help get our children on the right paths that you see from hands-on in the classroom? Ms. Ms. D Ms. Dozier. Um, I first asked them, a lot of times they have no idea what career path they want to choose at this point. So I asked them, what do they enjoy doing? And a lot of times, um, when they think about what they like doing, their first thing is for the guys I know, they'll say they like to play basketball. Mm -hmm. so from, that, from there, I'll say, okay, well, what about sports medicine or sports management? And get to think, getting them to thinking 
you know, other arenas within what they are already like. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful, Miss Erica. Um, I'm the same way with Miss Dozier. We have the Knicks, LeBron, the Knicks, mm -hmm. everybody at our school. And I tell you know, we have a little area in Lake City called Airhead. And I tell them in a minute, listen, they're not coming to Airhead to see y'all play <laughs> basketball. And like the, the guys got so the school got so last of y'all talking, that's my little line. They're not gonna come to Airhead, but hey, you know, nobody doing your dream because it, it can happen, mm -hmm. but you got to have a backup. You got to have a backup. So I definitely try to, and that's why I, I always go the same thing with the sports medicine, the physical thing. I was like, you know, those people that's on the sidelines doing y'all football games mm -hmm. with the khaki shorts and the black tops, you know, you can do that and you're still next to a sport that you love. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And then you have something that you definitely can make money and have a backup on. Mm -hmm. So it usually you don't have you only have about one or two that just be like no like they like they just know they the next one but usually the others be like oh, okay well yeah Mr. you know I understand that they'll they'll try something else because they've heard it from their parents before they mm -hmm. heard it from us so they understand that listen I got to have something because I tell them in the minute you break your toe your your leg your finger your like you're not <laughs> it's going to be gone you know your scholarship or anything is going to be gone so always have a backup. If you read these, you know, these famous people, these famous athletes, um, you know, different things about their life, their body, most of them will say, well, I wish I did. I wish I had, you know, or some of them went back to school while they're doing, you know, so go ahead and get out of the way. And then we'll see you in LeBron. Just remember Miss Erica when you get there. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. So Miss Miss Erica wants her check too, right? She wants her pizza. <laughs> Listen, I was there for you in eighth grade. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Miss 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 Coker, um, what what are what are some what are some of the ways that um that you help students get on the right career career paths? Uh, I personally, I love to tell a story about one of my students who was like, I want to be a vet. I want to be a vet. I want to be a vet. And she went and took her dog and watched the dog have surgery. And she came back the next day and said, I don't want to be a vet. I don't want to be a vet. I don't want to be a vet. Uh -huh. um, I love for them to, like, I have another student who's learning how to play the guitar on the, on YouTube videos and play the piano. And I love for them to actually see it. Once they have a little niche of something that they're interested in, I'm like with the mentors, you know, go find somebody, go, I want to hook them up with a friend that's, of mine that's an architect that went, you know, or I, I love to connect people, but it's hard sometimes at this age, because like Miss Erica said, it's, I want to be MBA or, you know, and I, I, I love to tell the story about the, um, the football player, Inky, um, and him getting hurt. And I, I, some of my eighth graders have watched that video of him and how he was fixing to make it. And he got hurt and he was unable to play anymore. And I want it to be real. I don't want them. I, I want them to shoot for the stars. I don't want to give up, mm -hmm. but always have something just in case. Right, right, right. Absolutely. And the biggest thing, I just had a conversation um, with my niece this um, here a couple of days ago. I'm talking about dreams and, and visions. You have dreams and aspirations of things that you want to do and you want to accomplish. Um, but the biggest thing is, is you've got to be prepared for whatever you do, with it, whether it's, it's being college ready or whether it's going into a technical career, whatever you want to, your desire to go into, you've got to be prepared for it. And uh, we were talking, talking about, you know, one of her visions and she says, well, you know, I guess I have to put, you know, that dream on hold. I said, well, you're not putting it on hold. I said, you got to look at it that you're getting prepared for it. I said, you're not going to get up, get up in the morning and get out of bed and say, hey, good morning. I'm going to the prom. You've got to, some time went into that event. Some preparation went into that event. You got your hair done, your nails done, your toes done. You, you've done your research. You, you, you've done all this research on the dress and and, and things that you wanted to do, your colors, you got prepared for those moments. And, and so it, it's so important for us definitely to, to really, really um, express to our children. It's not that um, you're putting a dream on hold, you just gotta get prepared for it. And, and that's one of the key things with, you know, with our children, because again, like Ms. Erica said, they wanna be LeBron James, they want to you know, be the Michael Jordans, but whatever you go into, you've got to be prepared for it. Make plans, make plans for it, make plans for it. And that's, that's, that's very, that's very important. That's very important. 
but but we're just we're just so glad just to have this conversation um today um it's so wonderful mr elliot we, we just so appreciate you mr carlos for 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 bringing forth this book and 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 this 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 vision um that you have because i know you and mr charlie's your, your passion for children and 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 being able to get them the experience and and your efforts you you you, you put a lot of effort in um making sure that the children have the opportunities to be able to go into the workplaces, to be able to get, um, you know, these outside curricular uh, mentorships and apprentice, you know, apprenticeships. And, 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 and you really go above and beyond in doing that. And, and, and we just thank you so much, you know, so much for your efforts in doing that, you know, bringing forth, you know, along with Mr. Carlos to ask, get, put them on the table, help us to ask these questions, because these are things that we, that are not at our top of, our top of our thought process. So definitely thank you all definitely for, you know, for that and for your passion as well for, for the youth and, and for the children as yeah. well. Um, and, and, and we're just so glad just to have this conversation today. And, and we just want to again, thank Mr. Carlos and, 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 and um, Mr. Um, Mr. Elliot um, for starting the great conversation for this book. And again, the book is Get Real. And, and we just want to thank everyone today um, on the panel for joining our discussion today. And there's one, one other key thing in the book that I just so love that was in the book. And it says out learners out learn by going out to learn. And I love that. I love that. That just, that just wraps everything up in, in a nutshell. Every, everybody doesn't learn the same way. Um, everybody doesn't have the same career path or career goals. So we have to make sure that we're not missing anybody in the wash. Um, make sure that we're asking every child, what, what is it that you want to do? What, what interests you? Uh, Mr. Mr. Elliot, what, what, are, what, are, what are some of the things that final things that you want to just let us know as the author, one of the authors of the book? Well, first off, of course, uh, thanks everybody for being here. Mm -hmm. um, um, we're always listening and learning and acting on what we hear. So it's, it's great to be here uh, and hear your responses to the book and what you're doing in, in your schools with young people. It, it's just great to hear. And we're all part of that whole piece. Um, I'm glad that uh, Carlos and I took the time to write this. I think it's very, very important um, that parents hear it and young people hear it and schools hear it. Um, as you were talking, I was uh, on the last question, I was just thinking about three physicians mm -hmm that um, one was a uh, 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 physician who came from Mexico, Dr. Q, who was in illegal, who um, ran a tomato picking machine. Mm -hmm. And he's one of the top neurosurgeons in the world. And he says, when I run a tomato picking machine and when I'm operating on somebody's brain, mm -hmm. I'm all in, it's the same thing. People don't realize how rigorous a, a whole piece around skilled trades are. The other physician loved working with leather. All right, leather as a young person and became the top larynx surgeon in the world. Well, if you think of vocal cords and you think of leather, all right, they didn't do that. The other one was a pilot. And he had people in his family who had uh, severe bronchitis and lung issues. He was the man who invented the ventilator that we're all familiar with now, the wow. precursor to it, the first one. So we are so much more than what we think of ourselves as just a, all not just, but a basketball player. If I asked LeBron James today, the other things that he's interested in, I'm sure he's very good at those other things. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's what we forget to do because we're so focused on how good somebody is at just one thing, but we're, 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 we have a multitude of interests and we got to follow them and pursue them because we never know where they're going to go. Mm -hmm. Tomato picking machines, to leather, um, to being a pilot. And those things made people better. And people don't understand that in schools. You're not just one thing. So people need the skilled trades in their, in their schools. They need them outside of school, connected to people. And then you take off. 
in so many different directions. That's how you connect that math piece to it. It's way, way out there sometimes, but we got to do that. So that's what I was learning from you all when I was listening to your responses. And I'm, I'm glad we had the time to be together. Wonderful. Wonderful. Ms. Kershell, you you have contact with everybody. You're out there in, in, the, in the districts. You're out there in the schools. What are some of the final things that you want to say um, to us and in, in, in your experiences um, and, and some inspiration to the teachers and the career specialists? my career specialists that are here you guys are doing a phenomenal job with the students um bringing in our uh, well allowing them to have certain experiences by bringing in speakers having lunch and learn taking them out for structured field studies so they can just become familiar with certain certain career paths and i know you all have a challenge um with getting into some classrooms or either some of you have a classroom and your classrooms are overloaded with kids, but you're still an inspiration. Um, I wish that I had career counselors when I was in high school who had conversations or even sparked conversations with me about a potential career. So I just um, commend you ladies for putting in the work because your students are gonna come back and tell you thank you for the conversation in the near future. So I'm just saying, keep doing what you're doing. I'm here as your support as always. Um, and at times I may push you to go further in your career um, by giving you next level experiences in your careers that will help make you better. And it will trickle down to your students, which will also make them better. So thank you ladies again for doing this. And um, I'm here to support you in any way I can. Thank you, Charlie and Elliot as well for the opportunity. Absolutely. Well, thank everyone today. And, and again, if you're looking at looking to, to get to get a copy of the book, you can contact them at www.bigpicture.org mm -hmm. or Harbor Freight Fellows at www.harborfreightfellows.org um, to get your copy of the book. Um, and I'm, I'm quite sure, you know, if, if everyone, uh, Ms. Chrishell Ms. knows everybody, so con nothing else, contact Ms. Chrishell. <laughs> to get your book and, and we just want to say thank you all again for your participation today and and thank you again mr elliot mr charlie and also mr carlos as well um for what you're doing um behind the scenes um to to push and 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 to do and, and it's so wonderful to see that your passion and your vision come alive